Hi everyone, this is going to be our first video on Green's Theorem where I introduce the formula as well as just the general idea. And then the next video is going to have a couple examples of actually applying this theorem. So first of all, I have the theorem just copied here from, I chose to take the theorem from the notes that I send you guys instead of the one in the textbook. Um, it's it's the same, uh, I just worded it a little differently and then included what to do with negative orientation. So first just reading it, well, if we have a region, so D here is taken to be a region in R2, so a planar region. Maybe I should have said planar here instead. Uh, and C is going to be its positively oriented boundary. So. For now, we're just going to kind of ignore or neglect this positively oriented since uh, I'll explain what that means in a second. But for now, let's just look at this formula. So if we have two functions, P and D, that are differentiable with continuous derivative, in other words, P and D are C1, then the integral over C of P dx plus Q dy Okay, so this you might recognize as something else. This is the line integral over C of F dot DS, where F is given by right, P as its first component and Q as its second component. So this is a line integral. Okay, so we can take line integrals of this form, P dx plus Q dy, and instead of rewrite them now as a double integral over D. So now this is just a double integral of a region in R2. So this is not a surface integral, right? This is just plain old double integral that we did back in chapter five. So we can take a line integral and instead write it as a pretty right simple double integral. All we have to do is take the partial derivatives of Q and P and right, subtract them in this specific way. So and then if C is negatively oriented, we just multiply by minus one. Again, we'll talk about orientation in a second. So why is this formula useful? So this is probably, well, it's, kind of, it's like a corollary of Stokes theorem, which we'll be covering in the next section. And Stokes' theorem, we're going to see, is actually probably one of the most powerful results in calculus. So this formula is really great, um, well, just by itself. And of course, it is part of Stokes' theorem, which I'm telling you is this awesome result. So why is this great? Well. On the left, we're computing a line integral. And in order to compute line integrals, unless we can apply the fundamental theorem of line integrals, so if we're integrating a gradient vector field, um, un unless we're in that case, the only way we know how to compute line integrals is uh, via parametrization. So on the left, side of this equation, we certainly have to parametrize C, unless it's a gradient vector field, but let's ignore that case. So we have to parametrize, and that can be really annoying, especially if the curve is kind of broken up into multiple components, right? then you'd have to parametrize multiple curves and compute uh, multiple integrals, right? So on the left side, we have to parametrize. That's generally pretty annoying. On the right side, we don't. So we no longer have to parametrize. 
right? You don't have to parameterize a curve just to right, compute a double integral over D. So that's just by itself is pretty awesome, right? That saves us a lot of time, a lot of computation that we don't have to parameterize that curve. We just have to set up the bounds for double integration over some region D. And especially if that region D is X simple or Y simple, right, this is gonna make it uh, much easier because you just have a single double integral um, and, right, Another nice thing about this is we can always switch the order of integration, right? dx, dy, we can switch to dy, dx if it's more convenient for us. Okay, and then also, the second one, maybe some of you would argue with me about this, but I'm gonna say second benefit here is that Double integrals are easy. <laughs> so again, some of you might argue with me on this, but by easy, I don't mean that like everybody should be getting them right all the time, but um, right, integration is something we have a lot of practice with, right? Double integrals, you can just treat them one by one as single integrals, and single integrals are something that you have tons of practice with, not only from Calc 2, but also just doing a bunch of integrals in this course. Um, so integration is something that we are really familiar with. We have lots of tools and if necessary, we have even another thing. We have the change of variable formula. So if instead of integrating dx dy, we want to maybe switch to polar coordinates or, uh, do some other change of variables like a parallelogram rule, then we can do that. Okay. Uh, the parameterization right, of a line integral, it doesn't give us that much freedom. Sure, there are lots of different parameterizations of the curve maybe that you could use, uh, but we have a lot more freedom when just computing a double integral. Okay, so that's why this formula is just amazing. Uh, it's going to save us a lot of time just in general. So now let's talk about uh, what we mean by positively oriented. And then we'll finish up this video, move on to the next one with some examples. So this picture is taken straight from the textbook. So uh, right, we have this little guy that is maybe on a golf course and he's walking around the, the hole there. And uh, the region D is this ellipse and C is its boundary. So when I say the boundary of a region, uh, hopefully this agrees with your intuition that, you know, this line here going around the side of D, you know, that, that's the boundary. Okay, so C is the boundary of D and how it's oriented right now, this arrow here, uh, the guy that's walking along C in its direction, right, uh, the region is on his left and that's what we're going to call positive orientation. So positive orientation in general. Is if we walk along the curve, the region is on our left. So, left, okay, as opposed to being on our right, of course. <laughs> so, this little guy here on the golf course, as he walks along C, D is on his left, so that's good. So, some uh, particularly imaginative students might think, well, doesn't that depend on what is up and what is down? Right, if this uh, little golf guy instead was walking upside down on the curve, then you think from his perspective, the region would now be on his right instead of his left, 
<laughs> okay, so uh, basically how we fix that is uh, don't walk upside down. <laughs> uh, so you wanna think of it like, right, these are all planar, planar curves that we're gonna be dealing with. So you're gonna be able to draw these curves realistically on like your piece of paper uh, or right, on a computer screen. So if you were to quite literally, so maybe you have a really large piece of paper, then you could quite literally put it on the ground and walk along the curve, right? If you drew the curve really big on a big piece of paper, you could actually walk on it. And that is the orientation uh, we want. So if you were to actually walk on the paper that way along the curve, the region should be on your left. Right, so you're not gonna flip the paper over and walk on the back side of the curve, right? That doesn't make sense. So just make sure you're you're walking in the uh, the right the right side, <laughs> right? You, up is gonna be the up that you think it is when we talk about this positive orientation. Okay, so uh, right, of course, if you walk along the curve and it's on your right, that's what we call the negative orientation. And how we deal with that is, well, if C is negatively oriented, we just multiply by a negative one. So maybe you could take this as partial PY minus partial QX instead of partial QX minus partial PY. Okay. And uh, just one quick thing before we end this video, some people might think that oh, the region being on your left, well, that just means that the curve is traversing counterclockwise. Um, but that's not always the case. And in fact, uh, in one of the examples, we're going to be looking at a curve. Okay, I don't have it here yet. But we're going to be looking at a curve that is kind of a donut shape. And right, we care about what's inside. So our region D is like what's is like the actual donut. It has a hole in it here. So this curve uh, on the inside here is still positively oriented, even though it's going clockwise, right? Because if you were to walk, if you were to you know put this on the ground and walk along this curve, the region D is still on your left. It's not on your right even though it's going clockwise. So uh, positive orientation doesn't always mean counterclockwise. Um, if you have a hole in your region, clockwise could end up uh, being positive orientation.